Well, it looks like one leafer at it again. I get a lot of digital binos pass through my doors and I've done some reviews on some of them. But um, this one here, the uh, one leaf find NV200 with the optional laser rangefinder, 4K, and it actually is, it's not just marketing hype. It's actually pretty good. So keep watching, I'll give you a view on these. YouTubers and how are you doing and welcome to Ergonology. On this channel we do a whole load of air rifles, pistols and technology reviews as well. So uh, if you're new here hit that subscribe button down there, hit the bell notification um, and you'll get notified of all the new videos um, and also check out our Facebook group. On there you will find um, loads of helpful people. Just if you do ask to join the group make sure you read the questions and answer the questions properly. But anyway, let's move straight on to these bad boys. Yes, one leaf are at it again. They're starting to form a bit of a reputation of producing some great night vision stuff. So I'm going to say again, thank you, Adam, for sending me over a pre production. And I believe these are now live as of October the 10th. 2022 on their website and of course i will leave links and a discount code if you use it down below for all one leaf products um, if you want to see any of the other videos that i've done on there um, clip on night sight systems then check the videos i'll leave down there and up here as well um, the discount code will work everywhere so check them all out of course i get a bit of kickback but i'll tell you what they're worth it a lot of people like them but anyway let's crack on the Find NV200s. I'm just going to call them the binos. Effectively, these are digital binos and they're claimed to be 4K. <laughs> How many times have I seen that marketing all over the place? But you know what? These actually are 4K. I've taken video with these and I've checked the file properties and checked it in editing processing software and they are indeed 4K. So there is a proper 4K digital sensor in here and they claim to go up to 120 frames per second. I have personally only tested it out to 30 frames per second, the default settings, but you know, I'm not going to dispute that. It is just fantastic that they've actually put a 4K sensor into these. So what are they? Right, quite simply, they are a set of binos, or binoculars, but they're not really binos. Yeah, with binoculars, what you have is you have two objective lens and you look through two eyepieces and they come together to form one image. That's not exactly how these work. They're in a bino format. What you actually have is two completely separate elements. You have a lens here where the light comes in and this has an aperture cap on it as well because of um, when it's really bright you don't want so much light hitting this very sensitive sensor so in there is your objective lens that's the bit that actually captures the light and then this side is an infrared torch and then that all comes out into an LCD screen on the back so what you've effectively got here is a monocular with a LCD screen. It's basically a digital camera with infrared torch on there in a bino format. So they're called the Find NV200s. Yeah, just think of them as digital binos. But also with this unit is it's got the optional for an extra $150, a rangefinder unit plugged onto the top of it. Now you can get these in two variants. And again, check the website down below. You can get them in the standard NV, Find NV200s or the Find NV200 LRF, standing for laser rangefinder. If you do get the rangefinder version of them, you can actually take the rangefinder off. It's just held on by an Allen bolt on there unplugs and then you've got the basic unit as well um, and the rangefinder does add a little bit of extra weight all in all the weight of these is about two pounds so they're fairly hefty but they are well made and i can testament to that i have dropped these from four foot on concrete um, and yeah they still work so they're very very well made they're made of good solid 
ABS plastic and metal up here for the rangefinder. Very, very good. They're also IP6 rated waterproof as well. So let's just walk around this whole unit. How does it all work? Quite simply, as we said here, at the front is the lens element. Now, one unique thing that they're doing with these MV200s is they're allowing you to actually take out the whole lens element and replace it with different size lenses. Um, and I'm probably just leaving a picture at the moment showing you that. And they say it's just like a DSLR. Um, and those are going to come separately um, later on down the line. So literally there's a little catch at the bottom here. You undo the catch, you take the whole lens element out. The sensor, you'll see the sensor. And again, I'll leave a picture where I've taken it out. You can see the sensor and then you put in a new lens element. And there's no idea on availability when they're going to come and how much they're going to cost. But it does actually allow you to size up your binos themselves. So um, nice idea there. So there's your lens element. It also has on it a focus wheel that you can turn and adjust to get the right focus. As we said before, on this side is your IR torch. Now this is an IR torch running at 815 nanometers and it's rated at 8000 milliwatts. What does that mean in English, Steve? Basically, it means that this will go out to about 600 yards. That's a lot again, marketing, isn't it? Well, I've actually tested that, you'll see later on. I've actually tested that at 400 meters and it was working. So I sort of believe those claims. I don't go out to 600, but you can actually also focus the zoom, focus the IR. So you can have a wide field IR or you can really tighten that beam down on the IR with what looks like a focus ring here, but it's actually a zoom for the IR. And if you look carefully, uh, when you get these when you turn it you'll see the ir element move in and out and that focuses tight beam wide beam very very good also has eight levels of ir brightness so you got ir off one two three four five six seven eight eight being the highest and that's how it achieves and, you know in my video that you'll see later on 400 meters not a problem it works so i very well believe that 600 uh, 600 uh, yards you know quite quite easily up the top here is a rangefinder. That's the optional part if you buy the rangefinder. Of course, you can take that off if you don't want it on there. It does add a little bit of weight, but that once it's in, fully integrates to the LCD. So you literally press the rangefinder button up there. At nighttime, you'll see the lanes of rangefinder flashing. Um, and basically, then you will actually then get a range marked up in the screen for you to tell you what range you're looking at and what you're targeting. Very nice. Underneath here, there is also a red dot as well. Yes, they've incorporated a red dot onto there. Um, very, very nice, very handy if you're spotting. So I can certainly see these as if you're in a static hide or you're with somebody else. Um, let me just screw that back on. I'm doing my head in, waving around. Um, I can see these being very useful if you're spotting for someone. You can just press the red laser dot and point out and laser point out to where uh, you're looking. Um, very, very useful, nice little feature, but, um, and you can cover that up with a little cover here. Um, very, very nice. The batteries, they go into the sides in here um, and they take free 18650 batteries, three of them. So that's, yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, but they do supply you the batteries, um, one leaf branded batteries, very good batteries. You just undo the covers, slot the batteries in um, and you're good to go. And you can recharge the batteries up through the USB-C port that's underneath this little cover here. And under this cover, you'll see it in an SD slot. So this will take up to a 256 gigabyte. So that's a large SD card into there. There is a mini HDMI port, which you'll see me use later to show you the video of the menu systems in here. Um, and then the USB-C charging port. And it looks like there's even a microphone or a sound out button, uh, 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 three, three and a half mil jack there. I'm not sure which one it is, but um, that's all covered up. And um, I will say in the video later on that I thought that if you had this cover over, it would deafen or muten the microphone. And that's not the case. The microphone is actually somewhere else on here and I don't know where. So you can have that cover waterproof tight up everything's fine and you still get good sound. Uh, we have a couple of good little straps on here for holding on to it all. 
Um, very, very useful, very nice little straps made of leather. Underneath, good to see they've done this. They've added on a standard tripod screw um, because of, you know, you're probably going to want these out on a tripod in a static hide, scanning around to that side you look through, scanning around and then going to your rifle or your spotter I want to. Because so we all know, once you're actually holding on to binos, you tend to get a bit of the old arm shakes in there. Um, and what else have we got? Then we've got the viewfinder at the front here. So it's a little bit rubberized bit. It doesn't quite fit over your eyes. Um, it's a shame that, but generally you're not going to be sort of like really close to it. You're just going to hold it at a distance and you sort of look at it a bit Star Wars-y like on there. Um, and that's a three inch IPS screen. So it's high quality screen in there. And they've got some nice little glassware in here as well so that you're not straining your eyes and you're not getting, you can't see the pixels that what's called screen door. Um, on here so they've got some good glassware so you get a really good crisp sharp IPS quality basically IPS is HD quality imaging through that very very nice and if you put the HDMI cable in you can actually project that out onto a screen and still see through here so really really nice on that so um, I think that's about it just looking for of course we've forgotten the main features and the main features are the buttons at the top so we have a central button for switching the unit on and off, long hold, long press, on and off. Single press activates rangefinder if you have the rangefinder module plugged in. And then you've got some menu buttons here for moving up and down menu systems and switching IR on and off, as well as activating the red dot torch. But um, yeah, let me run you through some more specs on this. So there is no optical zoom in these all the zoom is digital and there's 40 steps of digital zoom it goes all the way up to i think 20 times zoom with this now because you've got a 4k sensor in here well, you're actually zooming in digital and i'm sure we've all seen it before when you zoom in it's like looking at a newspaper if you get really really close to a newspaper you can see the little dots that are made up and that's what's called pixelation the bigger the sensor you've got in here the less that happens so if I've, in the video later, you'll see that I'll zoom in and zooming in up to 10 times is quite acceptable. Obviously, once you start getting up to 20 times, you're going to see pixelation. But because they've got this 4K sensor in here, it's actually very, very useful. So it's all digital zoom in there. Um, it's using the Sony Starviz uh, sensor, the 4K version. Um, and I've used that sensor before and it is a very, very good sensor. It's very, very sensitive to light which means even under low light conditions it's gathering a lot of light and that's why they give you this aperture cap on here because there's sometimes there's too much light coming in in the daytime and you need to reduce it with a little hole here um, to improve the contrast you'll see a lot of night sites do this sort of stuff the Yukons do it as well but very nice um, but the star, Sony staff is and the good thing about that is you'll find that even if you've got a um, sort of a little bit of moonlight out or a few sort of like um, urban lights around you very much rarely need to use high levels of IR on this because that sensor is so good at gathering that light what else have we got on here? We talked about two year warranty they come with as well. It records in MP3, uh, MP4 format, um, H264 quality, which is basically the quality, the best quality that most people use nowadays. Um, drops it onto the SD card as well. You can go from HD 1080p to um, um, one, uh, 1440p, all the way up to 4K all the way up to 120 frames per second. You can go up to 48 megabyte images, single click images. So use it as a camera down to eight megabytes if you want. You can play around with it all. They claim the battery life on these is a maximum up to 12 hours. And that will be basically without the IR torch running. When you, as soon as you put the IR torch on, you start going really high up on the brightness levels, then they expect that to drop off. But again, it's, free um, 18650 batteries just keep a spare set in your pocket away you go it's probably going to last you all night time on there and we talked about the weight or about two pounds worth um but uh, nice nice it all does also they come in a lovely little box like this and then there you get cleaning cloths charging cables carry case in it protection case and other little goodies that you get in that um probably again i'll leave you a picture around but anyway 
Let's um, show you some daytime footage of what these actually look like. So I took it across to my local field, had a play um, in the daytime, showed you, went through the features, showed you the quality, and yes, they are actually 4K. It is proper 4K on here, not marketing rubbish you see on things like ATN 4K, which was never 4K. It's just marketing, but yeah, it's proper 4K stuff on it. And then we'll flip it into nighttime, the same scene, having a look around, seeing what it's like, looking at the IR capabilities on it. All of the the um, voice and audio you'll hear is actually coming through the microphone system on here with that protective cap in place. So ignore if I say that that causes problems. It's not the case. I was wrong. So let's run that for ET. Look at the day, look at the night time, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're outside with the MV binoculars here from One Leaf, um, and I'm looking across my favourite field where I do a lot of my um, videoing. And we're in daytime mode, and we're at standard one time zoom now. As we know, that this uh, does not have any optical zoom, it's all digital zoom. And at the moment, the rangefinder is indicating at the top of 170 metres to that building, which I know is about right. What we're going to do now is we're going to digitally zoom in. Um, and of course this is only a digital zoom so we'll go in at the moment six seven eight nine ten times zoom and this is supposed to be a 4k sensor so when you zoom in on digital it's like zooming into a newspaper you get to see all the little dots that make the picture up obviously the better the sensor the bigger the sensor then the less artifacts you're going to get the less graininess you're going to get and that looks quite good at, at zoom 10 um, and let's take it all the way up to zoom 20 20 times zoom um, and you know what that's not too bad at all um, that's quite impressive um, obviously I've got this on a tripod as well uh, to try to reduce this, the camera shake and that lot but that's not too bad at all and we'll just zoom all the way back out again so we're coming out and of course I'm recording this video uh, audio um, through the unit as well so hopefully you can hear that what I am actually going to do is I've got the protective cap where you plug in all of your uh, your SD card. I've actually got that off at the moment and the, the microphone's underneath it. I'm just gonna pluck that back on again and see whether or not you can hear me. And I'm gonna guess that you probably can't. The same with the MV uh, night sights that you get to attach onto your scope. So I'm gonna take that back off again so you can hear me. It's not a game changer, but it, it's a bit of a shame. And um, we pan around, um, it's very responsive. The, the sensor is very responsive. Um, it is trying to auto um, compensate for exposure at the moment, so I have it set to auto. And the sun is literally directly in front of me. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty good. And that's ranging out now. And the rangefinder is roughly the center of the screen. That's ranging out to 170, 180 yards out to that tree line, which I know is true because I've 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 been on this field multiple times. Um, there's a building out there that I know just get that and it's very you know let's see if we can just get that sorted out but yeah working out very very well indeed what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to switch it into night mode in the daytime um so we'll put it in night mode and i personally like the night mode you know the night mode gives you the black and white now it's overexposed a little bit here but um and that's because of the sun is directly in front of us but I do actually like the night mode. Um, let's, let's just zoom in on that window again, um, over on that distant farmyard. So let's zoom in. I think this night mode is very, very good. Um, it just the black and white gives you, it just appears to be crisper images, much nicer. Yeah, there we go, 20 times zoom. So yeah, it's very nice, very good, very good little unit. Um, 4K sensors really does look nice when you're looking through the eyepiece itself but obviously that really depends on what it looks like when we come down and drop it onto the computer see how well it looks and how smooth it is on there but um, yeah I'm very very impressed with this um, it'll be very good to take this out at night time uh, to see how well it is um, and again let's just ping the range so I can switch the range finder on and off yeah 180 it's still obviously you know, the, the rangefinder is not affected whether it's light on 
daytime, day or night time um it is just effectively laser light that's pinging out and coming back again um but yeah very crisp looks very good um i do actually prefer it in black and white mode in ir mode uh but um yeah that's working out really nice let's uh let's zoom in down there so let's zoom in to that silo down there yeah and i know that those buildings are about 400 meters and that's reading perfectly there to 400 meters for me about 340 meters or so so yeah very very impressed um good little technology that you actually get here certainly good enough in daytime for spotting things so what we'll do is we'll bring it back out at night time and see how we get on Okay, so we're back out on location, same place, looking over the field, and obviously this time we've got it in night mode. What I'm going to do is switch off the IR torch, and it's got eight levels of intensity, so that's it off. And that gives you an idea of the ambient light that's around. It's a moon, it's an overcast night, but you really, if I just pan around, you'll see it's fairly difficult to see what's out there. The sensor itself actually picks up quite a lot of amount of light. There's a few lights on over at the farm, but you can see there's not a lot going on there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to switch the IAR torch on. We'll just cycle through the levels. So we'll go IAR 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's on its maximum. And if you remember rightly, that tree was over 200 meters away. And we can see this, and I've got this in spotlight mode with the IR torch actually fully zoomed in, and that pylon is over 400 meters. Now the way IR obviously works is uh, it um, illuminates out in the infrared, and then the infrared section of the sensor here is picking that all up, and we can see that really, really nicely there. There's our farm buildings over there. What you can also do is you can floodlight this, so I'm going to go into the trees and then I'm just going to basically turn the dial on the IR torch side and we'll just floodlight it out so we're no longer spotting it and now we can start to see lots of stuff in the near ground because that light is now dispersed over a much bright wider area. And on a side note as well, I have actually got the... Um, the waterproof cover over the SD slot um, and my previous comments in the daytime about the night about the microphone not working with that cover on are totally wrong I'm pleased to say actually works absolutely no problems at all uh, with that cover in place which is a very good thing um, and of course what we can do now is we can go in and we can zoom in so you've got all of your usual features so let's just do a zoom in fact we'll go back down to our farm building go down to there, down to one of the buildings, and then we'll do a bit of a zoom in there, and you can see digital zoom, and that's ten times, that is very, very, very usable, and obviously you're going to get pixelation when you go too far, which is pointless doing that, but you've got to remember that that building over there is 100, nearly 200 metres away, and this is working very, very well, very well indeed. And of course, all of this lot still works with the laser rangefinder. So when I switch the laser rangefinder on, you can now see it flashing. So I really do recommend that when you get one of these, is that you operate it at night time, then you get to know where the laser light is flashing, because in the daytime you won't see that. And then you'll know where that is, so that you can see it's slightly off center. And literally that's now reading that tree line down there is 200 meters, which is absolutely perfect. So obviously the rangefinder works a lot better in daytime. Um, yeah, three, four hundred meters away, the silos down there, three to four hundred meters away, and you can see that that's actually doing really well. And I remember I'm in floodlight here, so what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in the torch now, and try to get that in as tight as I can, and you'll see now that's actually yeah that's that's IR in out to three hundred meters, pretty damn impressive very very good um, I don't actually think you would need to use a separate torch with this um, I'm very you can certainly easily spot foxes or anything down in the wood lines anything so very 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 impressed with that right, it's just starting to rain now but hopefully that shows you the functionality of this um, I'm just gonna put that zoom out to something 
like that, that's okay. Yeah, very impressed. Um, pretty good. Um, I'm liking this. Uh, certainly get what you pay for, and with the 4K screen, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're back. I was dubious. I've had, like I said, I've had lots of these pass through my doors. Some of them I've not even bothered to review to bring to you because I thought they were pants. But these are actually pretty damn good. I'm seriously impressed with the image quality. That 4K screen that they've put in there for the price point, brilliant. As you can see, the digital zoom's probably good up to about 10, 12, maybe 13, if you get the focus just right and you've got a good amount of light quality coming in. Um, but it's there if you wanna go further. The nighttime, uh, the IR torch, sublime, um, that is brilliant. Yeah, it, yeah, as you can see, um, I was looking at some of the distant objects there, 400 meters away, zoomed in, focused in the torch, and it picked it all out. And the range finding, of course, is just another cherry on the cake, especially for spotting. Um, and like I said, I recorded the videos and the audio on this and then checked them out on the computer and they are indeed 4K. Um, very, very nice. What I want to do now, though, is just run you through the menu options because of what you saw in the video is not what you see through here. So I plugged the HDMI cable in. Um, stuck it onto the capture device and then run you through the menus and show you what you actually see through here. Okay, so what I've done is I've connected up the MV binos up to the HDMI cable and capturing the output for you. Uh, this is just to show you a live version. I've actually got the rangefinder running. So if you look at the top right, you'll see a little red flag that means the rangefinder is actively pinging and it's pinging out and reading six, eight meters. Um, and you can see it's out to 10, 27 meters when I hit the roof up there. That just gives you an idea of how that all works. But this part of the video is not really to show you the image quality. There's another video coming up to show you that. What I really wanna do here is walk you through um, how to use the system from the menu point of view. So at the top of right hand, left hand side, you'll see some numbers. If I hit the record button, you'll see that they will actually change. And now I'm recording video um, and there's a little counter up there. I can stop it again. And there we go, we stopped. We've seen the range finder to the right hand side. Then we have a 4K 30F frames per second. That's what my video recording mode is set to. Going down to the bottom right, we have a little SD card that's green. Um, that tells me I've got an SD card and then a battery indicator with a level. And then we have the one leaf date and time system all down at the bottom left hand side. But let me talk you and walk you through the menu system. So all we got to do is hit the menu button, hit the menu button and up it pops. And it's very simple. Up and down arrows is all you need. Um, and then the OK button. So if I hit the OK, here's all of our video recording, and apparently this will go up to 4K, 120 frames a second. I haven't personally tested it. I just leave it at the default, 4K, uh, 4K 30 frames. But it will go to 1440p all the way down to 1080p, which is FHD. Um, so we'll just click OK on that. We also have our still image. So this is when you take a picture. Um, by default, it sets at 8 megabytes to reduce size, but you can go all the way up to 48 megabytes. Remember, this is a 4K sensor, so it'll quite happily do that. Um, we have picture-in-picture, picture, which some people find useful. What I'll do is I'll just switch it on and show you. But what it actually does is it creates a separate window. Oh, let's just make sure we actually select that properly. Okay, and we will go to picture-in-picture picture mode on. And you'll see in the center, top top center, if I just hit the menu buttons off, you'll see that you actually get a zoomed in version of what's at the center of the screen. Some people find that useful. Um, I find it a little bit distracting, but it's there if you want it. So we'll come down to the picture in picture and we will switch that off. We have a lens selection, so you can actually take out the front lens section on this, um, and I'll show you that later on 
in the review um, and in there uh, and I don't think these are available at the moment but um, I'm sure later on one leaf are going to give you options to be able to switch the lenses out on these binos um, it's a very very nice feature but I've just left it set to the standard 35 mil that I have on here um, then we can change your units between meters and yards your movie clip time is an important one by default it's set to two minutes that means it'll split videos up into two minute sections I find that very annoying I set it to the maximum of 10 minutes auto record on or off whether or not when you switch the unit on it starts recording I have it off to save um, space you can adjust the LCD brightness as well through here so if you find it's too bright at night you can switch it off there um, you can change the levels there your exposure again if you're finding that the screen is overexposed even with the aperture reducer cap on you can change all of it there and then we've got some standard stuff like the date stamp logos on on screen whether or not you want the microphone activated your date time format and your clock settings of how you can set that all up as well as the ability to format your SD card and a very useful screen here is your version and info card that gives you status and more importantly the software version actually on the unit itself one leaf will be um, releasing new versions where you can put it onto the SD card and update and give yourself new features and the final one is ability to factory reset the whole device so that's just a very simple quick walkthrough of the menu system there you know, quite inclusive what I do want to show you also is the IR button so if I click and hold the IR you get a warning saying please make sure you remove the aperture reducer on the lens cap to let as much lighting as possible and you'll notice now I've got a new symbol top right and that's the IR indicator mode uh, currently I'm set to mode 0 press the IR1 and you'll see it now it's a little number 1 and a little bar 2 and this is the brightness of the IR torch 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 levels of brightness and switch off again Okay, so that was the menu systems on there um, and how they operate. As so, as you can see, fully future-proofed as well because of it's all digital, so they can give you updates, so they can put new features into these as well. But overall, I think these are excellent, excellent. But let's, as I always do, talk about the pros and the cons about these. So let's have a go at the pros first because they're the easiest. Very well made, good quality. Um, I like the fact that they're nicely IPX6 waterproof. Like I said, I've dropped these on concrete and I haven't broken anything. I love the fact that you can have the optional rangefinder because of all of these binos that I've seen, these digital binos, they do not have the rangefinder in. And that's the one thing you want. Why do you use these? You use these to spot. Oh, you're scanning around, scanning around, scanning around. Spot a fox. How far is it? Press rangefind. Good. Put them back down on your neck strap, stalk in with your rifle, knowing what range you're going to. Very good for static hides or if you have a separate person spotting. I love the fact that the red dot is on there as well, really good. But I think the biggest thing about these is the fact that they are, as they say they are, 4K. There's a good proper Sony Star Viz 4K sensor in there. The amount of stuff like this I've seen with 4K plastered around naming no names and it turns out it's not. It's just marketing BS. These are actually proper 4K. Very, very good sensor. So I think for the price and the price point, considering you can get the rangefinder with or without, I think actually they've, they've hit the mark there for the technology that's in here. And the fact that you can swap the lens out in the future whether or not people will do that i don't know but it's an option if you want to do it so yeah very very suitably impressed there are obviously some downsides so here's a couple of minor ones bearing in mind these are proof of reduction but one of the minor points that i've noticed with these is that you can't change the color of the text in the viewfinder um, very simple thing. I fed this back to One Leaf, and they said they're going to change that with a BIOS update. Um, sometimes, you know, you might have a yellow, and you can't see it properly. The range in yellow. You might want to change the color of that. There were certain circumstances where I wished I could change the coloring of the letters in here. Um, not quite available at the moment. Probably coming. They said they will do that. It would also be nice as well if you could have a user-defined box that you could move around in the setup thing to tell you where the rangefinder is flashing. 
At night time, it's not a problem because you can see that rangefinder flashing. So you know it's always top left of the center. But in daytime, you can't see it. And then you're wondering where you're rangefinding. And you could be off by a couple of meters and that could give you big distances. So I've asked one leaf, you know, go in there, put a menu option and give a user a little cross or a square or something that they can manually move once they receive it. Check it at night and then they always know on screen where that rangefinder is pinging. And they said, yes, they'll look at that and try to get that in as well. So that's a minor fault. So in the meantime, I suggest what you do is you use them at night and you have a look and you see where that flashing ping is of the rangefinder and then you know where to aim these in the daytime. Uh, another minor fault of these that I find is that this eyepiece here does not contour your face, or well, it doesn't contour my face, but then you're not wanting to hold them. You shouldn't be really holding them very close. This is really just like a sun guard, that's all it is. But it'd be nice if that was like contoured so it fit properly around your face. Um, that's a very, very minor thing. And it has to be said, you know, at the end of the day, these are not cheap. Um, these are running at uh, $370. So, you know, it's almost pounds, UK pounds to euro to dollar conversion rate at the moment. So they're not cheap. However, you are definitely paying for the quality and the 4K in these. So, um, yeah, it does have to be considered. They are a fun toy. I'm going to personally be taking these fishing with me because of um, when I do a lot of night fishing, it's good just to scan around, see what's happening on the lake and also to range find out my distances when I'm actually fishing, carp fishing, so that I know how far I'm casting. Um, but yeah, very, very good. Like I said, they are now released. The full production versions are available as of October the 10th, 2022. Um, if you do what, decide that you want something from One Leaf, be it their MV100 Night Sights, I think make sure you use the codes down below. You'll get 10% knocked off. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I'm suitably, suitably impressed. Um, I think these are great. Um, and certainly something you should consider if you're after some sort of spotting, IR spotting devices. Um, really good. So let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know whether or not you've got some of these or you're looking at these, what other type that you've used, because there's loads of these in the market. Um, so I'd love to know your thoughts and I'll catch you on the next video.